Darren, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Jimmy, and good afternoon. Gl great to be here at the conference. Darren, the past year has truly been a transformational year for capstone mining, just in terms of production, profitability, and also the share price. And before we dive into all of those elements, why don't we just start with a brief overview of capstone mining? Sure. Well, Jimmy, Capstone is a base metal producer focused on copper. We own uh, two operating copper mines, our Pinto Valley mine, which is located in Arizona, and our Cozumel underground mine, which is located in Zacatecas, Mexico. We also own 100% of a, a, a copper project called Santa Domingo, which is located in Chile. And it is a fully permitted large scale copper iron project located in the third region in Chile. Um, and it's at low altitude and in a growing mining district about 100 kilometers from the port that we also uh, own there as well. Our strategy at Capstone is to build a sustainable multi-asset copper mining portfolio company, which all assets are in a prolific mining uh, jurisdiction and which is friendly towards miners as well. We invest in new technologies to help us drive costs lower. We operate in a safe and environmentally responsible manner in each of our operations and assets that we own. In 2021, we expect to produce about 185 million pounds of copper at C1 costs of $1.80 per pound. And this, is a, this production is, is expected to grow to over 200 million pounds of copper in 2022 and 2023, thanks to higher grades at both of our operating mines. In addition, we are currently in partnership discussions to fully finance construction of the San Domingo project. We are targeting a 50 to 70% ownership at Santa Domingo. And this would increase 2024 copper production at our assets to over 100% relative to, to today and at lower C1 costs down to around $1.15 to $1.20 per pound of copper on a consolidated basis. So as you can see, Santa Domingo offers investors transformational uh, growth potential. Darren, as you mentioned, your flagship property is Pinto Valley in Arizona. And a big reason for Capstone's success in the past year has been because of the optimization program that you and your team referred to as PV3. Maybe you can just touch on some of these optimizations that you've made here in the last few years. Sure. Um, well, Pinto Valley's current mine life extends out to 2039 in a mine plan that we currently call PV3. We're also currently conducting a PV4 study that will be released next year and is targeting a mine life extension into the 2050s. With over a billion tons of resource at similar copper grade to our current reserve grade, our strategy there is to apply new technologies to get brand new performance out of our vintage 1970s operation. And so really there are three key technologies that will be incorporated in the PV4 study. And we're using some of those now. Predict uh, predominantly the number one one, which is predictive blast fragmentation. And that really allows us to uh, put significantly more fines generated from the mine uh, through the mill. And that reduces our crushing and grinding costs, uh, as well as our maintenance costs significantly. It allows for higher throughput as the increased fines generated in the mine pass through the mill much faster. Our second technology is our what we call our Aries Hydro float Coarse Particle Flotation Technology. And this has been pilot uh, plant tested at Pinto Valley late last year with excellent results. We realized about a six to 8% increase in overall recovery up towards 90%, which equals new mill performance and is impressive for a low grade copper porphyry. The feasibility study on this technology is expected to complete in early Q3 of next year. And the third significant technology is what we call the Jetty Resources Catalytic Leach Technology. And it's a technology that Capstone is pioneering and that other companies are also recently announcing testing on as well. We have at Pinto Valley a huge, uh, large historic stockpile and an estimated 1 billion pounds of copper with an underutilized copper cathode plant. This stockpile plus the addition of low grade mineralized waste is expected to deliver up to 350 million pounds of copper recovery over the next 18 years. Low cost recovery of copper from what would otherwise be waste is a very big win for capstone in my view. 
Darren, I'm, I'm not a mining guy. I'm a finance guy, but I'm always amazed that when you can incorporate new technologies that have big improvements, like when you just mentioned predictive blast technology, uh, I find that quite interesting. Yeah, as, as, as I said earlier, our, our plan is to, and our, and, our, and our vision is to, instead of writing a check for a billion dollar, you know, new, brand new plant at Pinto Valley, we can make our old 1970s plant run just like a new one by doing these low capital, high return, uh, new technology projects that will enable the mine to run like a brand new mine without writing that, that large ticket expense in, in terms of capital. Darren, you touched on your next optimization program, which you refer to as PV4. What's the what's going to be the big differences between PV4 and PV3? Well, the, the target for PV4 is to produce a mine plan with an average annual production rate of around 160 million pounds of copper per year for the next 30 years. So significantly longer mine life and you're going from 135 million pounds up to 160 million pounds of annual production. And that would surface over 2 billion pounds of copper production versus what we had in our current, what we have, excuse me, in our current PV3 plant. And as I mentioned, we aim to use technology to, the, to deliver this growth by leveraging as much as possible from our current infrastructure. For PV4, we are conducting column leach work for an expanded leach scenario to allow for higher mill cutoff grade, and that would allow more more throughput through the mill at higher grades as well. And Darren, because of this, uh, the, incre the increased size of PV4, are you, do you foresee any issues with labor or permitting water? Well, the, you know, the PV4 study, as I mentioned earlier, will be released uh, early next year, so it's still a little early to get specific. But we do know that a longer mine life uh, would need uh, a new uh, tailing storage facility. Uh, and we do have the space on our privately owned patented land package to incorporate this. Uh, in terms of water, we're committed to being more efficient with water consumption. And this year, uh, we are investing in our tailings thickeners to improve uh, recycling uh, capabilities with water. Uh, we've also invested in many projects that will reduce evaporation at our mine site. And in addition, PV4 will mean increased mining rates that would translate into more job opportunities for the surrounding communities as well. Darren, there's a lot of property surrounding the Pinto Valley mine, and it's owned by the majors, BHP, Freeport, and also KGHM. What are your plans? Do you have any plans on increasing your footprint there or in consolidation or consolidating some of this property? Well, um, that's a great question, and and you know Pinto Valley is currently the only operating mine in this prolific uh, copper mining district in Arizona, which has seen mining activity for over 150 years. Um, and there, there are infrastructure synergies and resource growth opportunities with our neighbors, as you mentioned, um, uh, that we are actively pursuing right now. And these synergies uh, include, but not really limited to. You know, the use of brownfield, private, patented, disturbed land and sourcing sustainable water for growth opportunities. Also, uh, the use of underutilized copper cathode plants uh, capacity and other valuable infrastructure to grow our production. And as well, there's addition of large scale open pitable resource, uh, copper resource growth that could add a second mine uh, to our existing operation. So lots of opportunities, lots of synergies. And we're the only ones with uh, mining infrastructure that's operating in that uh, in the entire district. Darren, that's a great overview of Pinto Valley. Now let's touch on your second producing mine, which is Cosmin, and that's in Mexico, and it produces approximately 50 million pounds of copper annually. Why don't you just provide us an overview of Cosmin? Sure. Our, our 2021 uh, copper guidance for Cosmin is approximately, as you mentioned, 50 million pounds of copper at a C1 cost of $1.08 per pound. Earlier this year, we announced a 10-year mine plan, and that's the strongest mine plan uh, COSMA has ever seen uh, since it started production in, in 2006. From 2007 to, to 2020, Cozeman has delivered over $500 million in cumulative free cash flow, with positive free cash flow in each and every year of those, of those years since we began production. 
And we expect even stronger performance moving forward with higher throughput rates and grades, leading to a 50% increase in copper production at first quartile cash costs, driven by several improvements at the operating level. Firstly, late last year, we completed a one-way haulage loop that has significantly improved our ore haulage efficiencies in the mine. Our mine plan now is calling for 3,780 3, tons per day, and we now have underground infrastructure uh, for 6,000 tons per day when you factor in our 2,000 ton a day existing shaft and the ramp that we just uh, completed. Our mill currently can achieve 4,300 tons per day, and this can be increased at low capex investment, and this presents an opportunity to look for ways to increase production. Earlier this year, we announced a project called Impact 23, and that we will release in 2023 to target increased production driven by innovation and optimization and fueled by resource to reserve conversion and ongoing exploration. In February, we closed a $150 million silver stream with wheat and precious metals for half of Cozumel's silver. We believe Wheaton shares with our view that there are significant exploration and resource conversion potential that still exists and that would add to our already current 10 year uh, reserve mine plan. We decided to sell half of uh, Cozumel silver because it was the lowest cost of capital that we could use to eliminate all of our debt position at Capstone. Uh, and we have one of the strongest balance sheets now in the copper industry with a cash position at the end of last quarter of 75 million. And at current copper prices, we're delivering an after-tax operating cash flow around $30 million per month. So we are cashing up as we continue to de-risk Santa Domingo and prepare to deliver transformational growth with that asset coming online. So Darren, you just mentioned that one of the reasons why Wheaton got or did the royalty agreement with you was because of the exploration upside. Can you just expand on that? What are your plans for exploration at Cosman? Yeah, well, the the uh, you know we have we have two main vein systems there, and they're both open both uh, to depth and along strike and up depth. So they're open in all directions, and we plan to do an aggressive exploration program over 2021 and 22 uh, to add to the exploration success that we've already achieved there. That's number one. And the second prong to that is there's a fair amount of inferred resources that we will uh, do the, the appropriate amount of engineering to turn that resource into a, into a reserve as well. So both two bumps, one in exploration success and one in, 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 exp in, in uh, resource conversion to resort, reserve. Great, so we touched on Pinto Valley in Arizona. We touched on Cosman in Mexico. Let's go to Chile now and look at your development project there, which is called Santo Domingo. Sure. So in Santo Domingo, we've now owned this project for just over 10 years. So you, you don't always get the timing right when you buy assets, but if you buy a very good quality asset located in a very good jurisdiction, you know there'll be a time that it, the market uh, is right to put it in production. We believe that time is now. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we were attracted by this asset because of its location in a very well-established mining district at low altitude, close to port, uh, with great local community support. And these attributes lead to lower risk, as you would expect when you're trying to uh, execute either permit or build a, a, a copper project. Notable mines in the district include Lundin Mining's Candelaria Mine to the south, Cadelco's El Salvador Mine to the east, and Orion Mitsubishi's Manto Verde Mine uh, just to the west of us. The project's estimated capex is 1.5 billion, and that includes a $250 million port and $150 million iron concentrate pipeline. In March, we announced that we entered into a binding agreement with a port builder and operator uh, for Santa Domingo, and now we're also in discussions to replace the pipeline, the iron pipeline with rail. So the mine capex with those two things in place have, have come down to approximately 1.1 billion. <clears throat> also in March, we announced a $290 million gold stream, also with wheat and precious metals, and that reduced the CapEx down to about 820 million. Factoring the expected project debt financing of 50% of the original 1.1 billion, then the remaining balance is, is now down to around $270 million in terms of equity contributions. And as I noted earlier, 
We are in partnership discussions right now to bring our ownership down from 100%, which we currently own, down to somewhere between uh, 50 and 70%. And with this, our equity contribution would, could be anywhere from zero to 200 million, which Capstone at these copper prices could comfortably finance. The two biggest advantages the Santa Domingo offers in terms of risk mitigation are um, first and foremost, uh, the, the first two years are extremely high grade uh, with, with copper grades over 1% copper equivalent. And this is really extraordinary for an open pit mine. And secondly, we have a fixed cost turnkey proposal for 60% of the mine site capex. And, and this should limit the you know, impact of higher uh, capex inflation in, in a time when we're obviously in an inflationary period with all commodities going up. So assuming uh, prices of $3 copper and $8 iron FOB Chile, we expect a 1.9 year payback. So less than two year payback on capital and an internal rate of return of 33%. So it's, it's an extremely robust uh, project in terms of economics. The copper concentrate and iron concentrate or magnetite uh, are expected to sell at a premium and they're currently unencumbered of any offtake agreements, which is a key advantage for, for Capstone uh, at this time. I'm also very excited about Santa Domingo's cobalt upside. We announced in March that we have moved our cobalt project to pre-feasibility study uh, with the feasibility study expected in late 2022. We're targeting a simple flow sheet with a number of off-the-shelf metallurgical steps to recover up to 80% of the cobalt in run of mine ore. Santa Domingo has the potential of being one of the top three global producers of battery grades cobalt sulfate and the lowest cost of negative $4 per pound net of byproducts of sulfuric acid production. So Darren, uh, that was a great overview. I just want to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned. First of all, you said it was low altitude. What is the elevation? Um, Jim, it's, it's just under a thousand meters above sea level. And then remind me again, how close is it to the water? Uh, we're just under 100 kilometers from the water and um, our, from our port. And the port is fully permitted. Our project is fully permitted. As I mentioned, all the right-of-ways to get to the port are all permitted as well. So from start to finish, we are permitted um, throughout the, uh, from, from site to the port. And because it's low elevation, like you said, 1,000 meters, there's many mines in Chile that are at 10, 12, 15,000 feet in elevation. It's very complicated to construct. It's very complicated to get labor there and also water. Why don't you just touch on that and, and what these factors mean for Santo Domingo? Yeah, well, that's a great question. One of, the, one of the main reasons why we like Santo Domingo in the first place and we, and we bought the project is because it was at low elevation. We looked and we saw that all of the projects that were really big blowouts on capital uh, were due to a lot of them were due to high elevation because you get much less productivity and a, and a much harder uh, engineering accuracy when you're when you're trying to define capex from an engineering point of view to actual and so we, we just felt that low elevation there's you get increased productivity uh, less technical risk from a low altitude project and 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 we're very fortunate to to have this project one being at low altitude and you, two being in the third region uh, in Chile which is the Atacama Desert. Also, because of where it's located, labor is also not an issue. The only employment anywhere around the asset is all mining. As I mentioned, those those all those diff different mines in the area, as well as mining projects uh, with no agriculture. So there's no other employment opportunities really to speak of other than mining. And so that's why we've had such strong community support to, to build this mine and, and get into production to to uh, get employment uh, increased in the in the district. The Darren, I'm curious, you mentioned on the outset that your the CapEx is 1.5 billion and you're looking for a partner to reduce your exposure there and also reduce your capital commitment. But given that copper is at all time highs, why not just build this yourself? Well, we'd like to bring in, um, a, a, say, a 20 to 30 percent partner that would be interested in a copper offtake. You know, we believe that the types of partners that are interested in offtake allow very attractive financing rates. Their cost of capital would be lower in, in places like Asia than, than it is here. So we, we're interested in, in keeping a very conservative balance sheet 
having a minority partner that allows a low cost of capital and it allows the companies like Capstone to keep an extremely strong balance sheet and to fund all the other growth opportunities we have going on at Cozum and at Pinto Valley uh, at the same time that we, we build Santa Domingo. So Darren, one of your largest shareholders was Korea Resources Corp, also known as Corez, and they recently sold their position in Capstone Mining. So why don't you just touch on that, why they sold, but also I want you to tell us a little bit about how easy it was to place that block. Sure. Uh, well, as you mentioned, Jimmy, you know, Chorus was a large shareholder and they had been in Capstone for over 10 years. And as well, they were the 30% partner in San Domingo. Uh, but their global mining strategy changed with a new government and they've been mandated to sell all their mining investments. So earlier this year, we announced that we agreed to buy Chorus's 30% stake in Santa Domingo uh, in, in late May. So we acquired back the 100% interest. And then as you mentioned, just recently, Core has sold their approximately 40 million shares um, of Capstone. And that went to over 20 institutional investors in about 20 minutes of, of, uh, of live sale. Um, and most mostly general, generalists and resource investors in, in the US and Canada uh, were, were, we've been advised who bought the about the shares, but of note, our largest shareholder, GRM, uh, added 10 million shares to their holdings, and they were part, they were they were one of the biggest buyers of the uh, of those Corus shares. Uh, and with that, they currently own just under 25% of Capstone, and they remain very bullish on on Capstone, on our strategy, as well as the overall copper fundamentals. And so they're very supportive um, of our of Capstone and our growth growth plan. Darren, you just mentioned that some of the buyers of the block were U.S. investors, and I'm surprised to see that you don't have a U.S. listing. Is this something you might be pursuing in the future? We are looking into a U.S. listing. You know, we believe we're getting more and more um, U.S. Uh, investors, and as copper becomes what we believe is going to be the new uh, red red gold, uh, we believe that the you know the U.S. is um, mandated uh, you know energy policies and and power increased power policies is going to drive more investors into copper and we would like to expose them to that through a listing and, and and capstone so we are exploring that as we as we speak darren in the next few minutes why don't we just wrap up with what investors can expect just in terms of news flow in the coming weeks and months sure so really what, what's in store for capstone moving ahead um, well, clearly, the largest catalyst for Capstone uh, this year is most important, as we just spent some time talking about, is getting San Domingo under construction um, sometime in the second half of, of this year. Um, and also, we, we, we believe that we can, we can put together some good news on this district consolidation at Pinto Valley. Um, we think we can get some of that done um, uh, by the end of this year as well. In 2022, we'll announce the results of our PV4 study that will show Pinot Valley's true potential and the cobalt feasibility study at San Domingo, which as I mentioned, it will be one of the largest and lowest cost of cobalt projects outside of the DRC. And then in 2023, our Impact 23 study at Cozumel will be released and that'll show the true potential uh, of Cozumel as well. And all this leads into transformational year of 2024 where Capstone more than doubles production from today's level and goes up to 200,000 tons of annual copper production per year with C1 costs below $1.20 per pound. So Jimmy, we've got an exciting future in front of us and I think we're one of the most attractive vehicles for investors looking for exposure to copper and soon to be cobalt. Darren, that was a great overview of the Capstone Mining story, and I want to thank you. But before I let you go, I got to ask you about that photograph in the backdrop. Uh, this photograph's great. It's uh, it's a Canadian artist uh, that does photography, and um, this is the actual mine that the original statue of David was uh, was mined from, and mining still goes on to this day. So uh, uh, it's a it's a phenomenal picture, and I'm happy to have it. Thank you for asking. Well, Darren, once again, I want to thank you. And to all the viewers, if you have any questions that were not asked, 
or answered during this discussion, please send us an email to info at bloorstreetcapital.com and we'll make sure someone at the Capstone Mining team reaches out. If you would like some research on Capstone Mining, also send us an email and I'll send that along. Once again, Darren, thank you. Thanks very much for, uh, for having us, Jimmy, and appreciate the time.